Hello people, um, so today I'm going to be changing the tie rods and the brake pads in the front of my Honda Accord. So welcome to another video anyway, my name is Gavin, this is GPTV and I'm going to be doing, as I said to you already, I'm going to be doing the tie rods which are these here and as you can see my ones are really really bad, really bad. And then I'm going to be changing my brake pads as well. Now my brake pads on this side they look okay, but they are grinding when I when I drive, so I'm assuming that they're they're gone. So before I go any further, I want to show you this. Get one of these. This is a, this is an Allen key, okay? It's a T7 or a seven millimeter Allen key, but this one has a, a quarter inch a socket thing on it. But basically, it goes in here, okay? Now, if if you use one of these Allen keys, you won't get enough leverage on it. That's why, that's why I have this one with a socket on it so that it's, it's just easier to do it. But anyway, it comes off here. So you have to pull this piece off here and it's only a little cap, as you can see. And then this piece goes in here, like, 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 like that. And then socket, that's it. So that being my first tip is to get one of these with a socket attachment because it just makes it so much easier. Um, so do that, do that. Okay, so all you gotta do is slot that in there and loosen it. Ah, that hurt, but I'm okay. See how easy that is, look how easy that is. Anyway, that will release the carrier and you can just slot that off. The this this I don't know why they design things like this, but this here, this pulls out I'll do it in a minute, I'll show you. Anyway, just remove this first. And then there is another one right here. Ah. Where I'm an idiot sometimes. I bring these things out with me and I keep forgetting to put them in. Don't ask me why I keep forgetting to put these in. Someday this is, well, I don't know, hopefully not, but someday this jack or this these cars are gonna fall on top of me. I just keep forgetting to do it. Ah, it's too hot. In. Here we go. That lip. No, hello. Wait, 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 wait. Get in. Get in. There we go. Okay. Right. That lip. Now, I did show you on the previous video that uh, on my Honda Stream RN6 that you have your disc here. You have your disc here, and then you can see the inside pad. So this is the pad. This is the piston, this is the rubber thing that pushes back. So, you get your screwdriver in there, you can slowly, uh, yeah it has to be a nice strong screwdriver, this is not that strong but I'll, I'll show you now in a minute what we're going to do. You see there? You can see a little bit of light in there, that's separating the disc from the pad. And if you separate the disc from the pad, then you will reset your piston and you don't have to have a piston tool, a piston reset tool. Firstly though, <laughs> firstly open this cap. I think this is the easiest way of doing it. I think this is the easiest way of doing it because sometimes if you open this bleed valve, bleed nipple, you can tread this part here and you'll have to buy a whole new bleed valve or air can enter in here while the brake fluid or pressure is coming out. Um, it's a little bit awkward like some people do it this way and some people do it the way I do it But I think the way I do it is just it works for me. So I'm gonna keep doing it this way Yeah, you're probably better off getting something like this is a chisel and it's nice and strong. It's just hard steel So you're probably better off getting something really hard because my screwdriver just keeps um keeps flexing You see the light there Okay, that's fully reset there but that's, you don't need any brake 
brake reset tools or anything. No, I have them all, but I've always done it this way and it just works. It's easy. Now all you do is just release this. Just get it. Just get it over those little things here. And then pull off everything all together. And okay. Those pads look alright. Um, those pads look fine, there's no, maybe it's the other side, but maybe the other side has a problem, but there's nothing wrong with these pads, I'm going to put these back on, there's nothing wrong with them, I'm not changing them, look how much meat is on them still, there's nothing wrong with them, okay, save myself some money, put it all back on. Ah, damn it. Okay, so these were okay. I'm not going to replace them. There's no need to replace those pads. Um, it's probably the other side that's grinding. I'll have a look anyway. But I'm going to replace this now. So this is my tie rod. And first thing I want to do is release this part here. So just take the, the tension off this. So you get a, I think it's a 17. I'm going to check now. But you just release that, don't unscrew it all the way, just a little bit, and then count the amount of times that you have to turn this as well. So I'll, I'll show you now. Okay, so this is actually a 19, it's not a it's not a 17 like I thought it was, it's a 19. So what you need to do is put it on, I, I need two hands for this. So what you need to do is you need to put it on and you wait and loosen it. So I'm just gonna hammer it. So that's all I need to do is just, just a small loosen there like that to take the tension away from this one. And then you take off your cotter pin or your split pin. We call them in Ireland a split pin, but in different countries they call them a cotter pin. Well, you can see why we call them a split pin. So you just sort of prise it off a bit. Get it straightened out like that. Get your hammer, hit that end of it, and it will come through. And you just pull it out from the other side, which is much easier said than done. There you go. Now I suggest you get something like this. This is um, it's, it's like an impact gun. It's only a battery powered one, I just got it off wish, it's fairly cheap, but this is what I use to do this, because if you get your spanner and keep turning it, this whole, this whole nut will keep turning, so you need to do it fast, you need one of these, get one of these. Now, don't remove it all the way. Just just make sure you're not on the treads there. Well, it doesn't really matter. You're taking change in this anyway, but get a hammer and, and it's done. So now, just remove it and look how bad that is. You shouldn't be able to do that. It should be a little bit harder to do. I need to clean all this dirt off as well. But as I said, do not remove this or loosen this too much because you're gonna have to turn this. See the way this turns? And you have to count how many times you've torn it. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because if I don't count the amount of turns that I've taken it off, when I put the new one on, I won't know how many turns to put it back on. And this is all to do with your tracking. If you don't do this, your tracking will be way off but at least if you do it this way you we all still need tracking but it won't be as bad to drive it to the garage okay One 
full turn. Two full turns. Three full turns. Four full turn. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. And it's finished upside down. So I should be trying to put this one on upside down. And doing fifteen turns. That's one, two, three, fourteen, and it's tight. So fifteen, just about fifteen. That should be right. Should be okay. It shouldn't be too far off. As I said, you can see that you would, shouldn't be able to turn it too hard. Slot it in there, push it all the way down. Get your new, some people call this a castle nut. You can see that the one I've taken off is not a castle nut. So put your castle nut on. And put this on. This, this new castle nut here is a 17, not a 19 like the old one. So it's a 17. Nice and tight. Now you put your new split pin in. And the, the purpose of the castle nut compared to this one is, if the, take this one back out. If for some reason the nut was to come loose, then the, the, the castle nut will stop the nut from turning because it'll slot into it. It's never happened to me in all the times I've done this, but there's always a first. So you put your split pin back in, your new split pin, and you split it. So then you get your 19 spanner again and just tighten this back up. The whole level turn, but it's fine. Does anybody know anything about this here? Um, I, got, I got this jack and I have to raise it. Like you can see, right? You can see in there. No, you can't see in there, but it has. It has this end on it and this is all wearing away this is all wearing away so when I when I put it in there so when I put it in there and I try to turn it nothing it's not letting the car down I have to raise it slightly just to get a bit of a bite on it and even at that it's not great So if I if I want to tighten it up, I have to keep raising it up a little bit. And it's hard to explain it, but this part in here, this part in here is I don't know if that's treading or I think it's this that's treading. Or not treading, but wearing away the shape of it. Do you understand? So if anybody has any ideas about this, that would be great. Need to tighten the wheels back up to 80 foot pounds. Okay, I'm onto the other side now, and this pad looks okay, but I can't I can't see in there to see is the other pad okay. So I'm just gonna take this all off anyway and see is the pad okay in there. Um and then you can see that this is gone as well. So that needs to be changed anyway either way so while I'm here I'm gonna take this off and find out why the brakes are grinding okay so I'm just gonna do this side anyway and see what it's like and um, hopefully you're not too bad hopefully it hope actually hopefully it is the brake pad because then I'll know what it is because it's been grinding for a while and 
has been annoying me. I don't know what it is. I didn't check the brakes. I just checked the outside here and I could see that, but we'll see what this is like when we go in here now anyway. Go over here, you. Reset. See how quick it is when you're not filming anything. Well, you wouldn't know. You don't see this end of it. Job is easy. That's where the filming and editing comes in. That's the problem. It's a lot of work. And then you have to go into the SEO. And do all the do all that stuff and all the tags and finding a thumbnail and finding the right um, description or the right uh, video title all of that stuff and the job takes 10 minutes That's fine as well. Looks like this inside pad is perfect as well. See? There's nothing wrong with them. It must have been just dirt. It must have been just dirt or something in there. Okay, put this back together. I don't know why my brakes were grinding. I'm assuming. I'm assuming that there was just something on the on the disc or something, but it was grinding. So I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes you get a little bit of dirt in between the pad and the disc. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of dirt in between the pad and the disc, and that can make the grinding sound. But I have no idea why it was grinding. I can't see any issues with it. The pads look all okay. The discs look all okay. Whatever, they work. Okay, so even with the um, even with that that rattle gun, impact gun, whatever way you want to say it, the, the green drill thing, even with that, I still had an issue trying to get the other tie rod off. Um, it was just so seized on. Use some WD-40, I didn't do it in the video anyway, but use some WD-40 or something of like that penetrating fluid to remove the nut burst. But what I done was I just put it on and then pulled it to the side and then um, sort of pulled it tight to the side and then um, used the, the rattle gun because the nut inside just kept spinning. So if I pull it to the side, it holds it against the side of the bar and then the nut is able to come off sort of that way anyway but okay anyway uh, job's done I didn't find out what was wrong with the brakes while you were grinding they, they're, they're not grinding now I'm after driving the car here now they're not grinding and um, maybe it was just some dust in there or dirt maybe I should have just changed them anyway I mean I have I had them there I should have just changed them I'll probably just do them myself during the week or something like that if if the, if it is still grinding I'm just gonna do it during the week I won't need to do a video on it but that video is just to show you how to change them if you needed to change them, which I didn't. There you go. The tracking. I will need to get my tracking done. Even though I counted how many turns I had and so on, the tracking is slightly off. I'll show you now. Okay, so I'm in the center of the road here and I'm trying to drive as straight as possible. But if you look at the steering wheel, it's just slightly off. Just slightly. It's hard to see it. It's hard to see it, but it's turning, it's turning towards that way. So if I straighten it up a bit, it's just, I mean, it's ever so slightly off. 
ever so slightly. It should be that way. I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it anyway. It's just slightly off. I'm trying to go as straight as possible, but it's not. So to go straight, I need to turn it that way. There. So if anybody has any ideas of why my um, my jack or, or what I can do with my jack, because I could use I could, I could just use a, a socket set or something like that, you know, whatever, a 19 socket or something maybe, but that just defeats the purpose of the whole point, the, the jack in the first place. Like I want to be able to just jack it up and jack it down with the same bar. So. And I don't have a welder, so before anybody says, weld a piece onto it, or weld a socket onto it. Uh, so, I can't weld a nut in there or something. I can't do anything like that. So, has anybody got any ideas of what I could do in that situation? Let us know. So, thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And um, come back for more fantastic videos by me.